Are you a person with influence? And if we talk about influence, probably the first thing that comes to our mind is about leadership. Am I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a leader? Am I I'm a, having a, a leadership in my life? And, and probably you think, well, I'm not a leader. I'm not a leader person. I'm probably a follower person. But today I want to guide you that even though you don't see yourself or you picture yourself as a leader, you have a role of leadership and you have an influence in this world. That's why the Lord calls us to be the soul of the air and the light of this world. Now, as Charles Spurgeon said, I believe that one reason why the church of God at this present moment has so little influence over the world is because the world has so much influence over the church. And this is very true. We let the war have influence in us. We open the doors of the church for the influence of this war that we lost our influence to the world. Instead of we give an influence to this world, the war is influencing the church right now. And since the war is influencing the church, now it's influencing our family and influence our life. And now we see in this world there's no difference between Christians and not Christians. And we see that, that, that Christianity is having instead a positive impact and negative impact in society. It makes people angry, it makes people uh, disappointing, it makes people that lost their faith. And if people love their faith in God, they will lose their salvation. Our main purpose for living in this world is to give influence to the, this world that they will be safe. That the world will be safe through the work of the church. Now, if the church lost his power, lost his saltiness, as the Bible said, and as Christians, we love our role of being this influence of this world, then nobody will be safe. You don't need to be a pastor, you don't need to be a missionary, you don't need to be an evangelist to bring people to the kingdom of God, to bring people to God's uh, presence. You can, as a student, teacher, businessman, businesswoman, bring many people as possible to the kingdom of heaven. Let your kingdom come is our campaign this year. But how are we letting the kingdom of God come to the people's life if we are not giving influence in the fields that we have, that God gave us to work. God said, the harvest is ready, but we need more workers for the harvest. The harvest is ready, but nobody wants to put their hands in the harvest. We just want to wait, sitting down in our church, to see the fruits come to the church. We want to, to sit down and, 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 and let the fruits of the blessing of God come into our family. And, and we are so busy enjoying our blessing that we don't have time to prepare for the next harvest. God wants all his body of Christ work together for the influence of this world. Now, Bruce Shelley said, the schools, the, sc the courts, the media, and all seems determined to erase Christian influence from public life and confine religion to the four walls of the church or home. Now we see that Christians are happy in churches. Christian family are happy at home. But when they go out of the homes, when they go out of the church, they're not happy. And they are not happy because they are not being used by God. And they are not happy because they are not giving any influence to the world. And you know, if the world have influence on you, you are easily committing sins. And since you are committing sins, you are not happy because it's no one who understands that have committed sins against God can have a happy life. How we know we are happy when we are forgiven? when we know that we are accepted by God and we are made as new in front of God and God can use us to bring more people to God. That's the most happy moment in our life. Have you experienced that? Have you experienced the happiness to bring one person to Christ? To be used as ambassador of the kingdom of heaven? To be used as the light of the world? To be used as the soul of the earth? Have you experienced that once in your life? If you have experienced that, you know that that's the most wonderful, happy moments in your life. Because you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you can feel God's in you, working with you. And you can speak things that you never thought that you are going to speak. I mean, how, how many of you remember the first time you tried to evangelize one person? And you didn't know about the Bible much. But then these old words come after you listen to a bunch of sermons in, in, in church. And you suddenly remember everything. Everything that comes from Bible study. Everything that comes from a QT. Um, uh, training or, or everything that comes from a seminar that let you speak without preparation and you can even preach to, to people and, and you know that it wasn't you it wasn't you it was the power of the Holy Spirit working in you 
Have you experienced that? If you don't have that experience yet, I recommend you, try it. Try it. Don't be afraid. Just go and try it. You can experience that, yes, acceptance from the people, or you can re feel the rejection of the people, but what is sure that you're going to feel that God is with you. And it doesn't matter the consequences, positive or negative, good fruits or bad fruits. The most happy moment is that you see that God is speaking through you. We need to go back to the world. We need to, to, to conquer again the darkness places of this world. And, and as we know that the war is having influence into the church, they try to isolate the church and they try to isolate the, the homes of Christians to not have influence in this world and let their lie in one way or another be off from this world. James Kennedy said, the Christian community have a golden opportunity to train an army of dedicated teachers who can invade the public school classrooms and use them to influence the nation for Christ. We have power. We have a potential. We have the opportunity to influence this world. Start from home. Go to schools. Then go to the marketplaces and the rest of the world. Jesus said to his disciples, you will receive power from above when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the world. With this pattern model of evangelism, we know that the influence of this world starts from home. Your influence, your leadership starts at home. You can be just a child of a family who is not Christian and you can show an influence to your family members by the behavior you have by the way you speak, by the way you act. And this influence will be noticed in your family members and they will recognize you, that you have a power or an influence that comes not from you, but comes from above. You will do the same thing in your school. You will do the same thing in, in your uh, companies, your business, your neighborhoods, and people will notice. I'm sure for that. Now we are here to learn that this influence have to be developed. This influence has to be empowered so we can extend our range of influence. How much influence do you have? How can you evaluate your influence today in this world? I mean, what do you have at hand? When Moses, he was meeting God on the Mount of Horeb, he had nothing except a stick and a couple of sandals. When he approached the holiness of God, God said, take off your sandals because that's what con have contact with you and the world. And throw on your stick, because that's what you have at hand. And as soon as Moses take off his sandal and enter into the holiness of God, in the presence of God, he throw the stick on the ground, the holy ground, and this stick was used for Moses as an instrument of leadership. With this stick, he performed miracles, and he led the people of Israel into the desert for four years until they reached the promised land. We have to take off our contact with this, this world to enter every Sunday here in the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, be baptized or be filled with the Holy Spirit again, and then go to the world and whatever we have at hand, be used to lead this world to Christ, to have an influence in this world to lead many people to the kingdom of heaven. What do you have at hand? Do you have a pencil case, a couple books? Do you have a, 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 a capacity, a contract? Do you have a, a company? What do you have at hand that can be used by God? Have you ever dedicated what you have at, in your hand to be used by God? Maybe you can say like Moses, God, don't use me, I'm not able. And you can reject, even God can show you that whatever you have in your hand, He can use it and transform it for His glory under His power. God will still talk to you today and rebuke you today to take courage and to don't worry because even though you are not as good as you think you are, he will provide another person. Moses, he rejected his influence and his power and his leadership to God and God said, don't worry, I have you brother Aaron. Just go to Egypt and bring my people to worship me. Now, that means that Aaron was always helping Moses. It was a time that Aaron was training and helping Moses 
to have more confidence in his leadership until God said, okay, I don't need Aaron anymore. And now Moses, you are alone. It was in the first, second, and third plague that God allowed Moses to perform in the land of Egypt that Moses developed his leadership and influence and self-esteem was healed. And then after that, God didn't speak through Aaron. He speak through Moses directly to Pharaoh. And then that was the time when Moses was confident in leadership and he could continue his leadership for four years in the desert. Now in the beginning of your influence, you probably will feel that you have no confidence and you need help. That's okay. God have a church. You have brothers and sisters here. You have a pastor who will always in your back, who will always with you. When Jesus sent his disciples to, to evangelize the city of, of Israel, he said, you should go two by two. Why Jesus say that? Because they know that if we go along, we're probably going to give up soon. But if we have a partner, we have someone, if we have someone who, who is with us, then yes, we can see that together with one partner, things will be easier. We need influence. And the kingdom of God have influence in you. What is this kingdom influence? What is the, key, the influence that as children of God we have? In this world well the scripture will tell us that we as Christians we have influence as the salt of the air and the light of this world now today I, we're going to talk only about the salt of the air what is the function of the salt the principal fu function of the salt is to preserve and to act as an antiseptic in other words the business of the salt is like a salt rub it into the piece of meat to preserve against those agencies that are tending to its putrefaction. Another subsidiary function of the soul is to provide savior, flour, or to, pretend, or to prevent food from being insipid, in other words. The same way, Christian life or life without Christianity is insipid and is decayed. This war without Christianity have no taste and it will corrupt and put a fact as sooner as it go worse. The influence of Christian and Christianity in this war is to prevent the sooner corruption of this society. We know that at the end of history, everything will be disappeared, everything will be gone, but we are still here holding the wrath of God, holding the judgment of God for one more day, for one more soul, for one more person who come to Christ and be saved. Remember that your influence in this world is not just to get some power and show up whatever you can do in this world, but it's to bring one person to Christ, to bring one more soul to the kingdom of heaven. How we can influence in this world? What are the characteristics of, of Christian in this world? As we already started this year, and as a review, I can show you again, the kingdom's virtue. The kingdom virtues are seven as we study this, this beginning of this year. True, grace, love, servanthood, self-control, justice, and humility. You can be as the soul of the air if you always speak the truth. If you always live by grace and you have love for God and love for one another, you serve this world and so have self-control and pursue justice and be humble. Just doing that, you can preach without words. Just Show into the world, your companies, your neighborhood, your schools, wherever you are, and even in church, because in church there are Christians and non-Christians who come every Sunday. We call it disciples and Sunday Christians. So the disciples are those who are committed to Christ. Sunday Christians are those who just come to listen to a sermon every Sunday. We must be like Jesus. And as we say in the series of the Beatitude, becoming like Jesus is our main goal of living. To be poor in spirit, to mourn for our sins, to, to, to be meek, hunger and thirsty for righteousness, merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, and even endure persecution. That's why we are here, as the soul of the year. But once again, you cannot understand your influence in this world if you don't understand your leadership in this world. You cannot understand what is your role in this world as leaders and at the same time as the soul of the year. If you don't see yourself that your influence is not to show up your talents, 
to show off your capacity, to show off your potential. That's why Jesus gave us two pictures of leadership or influence. One is the soul of the air, one is the light of the world. We have in the kingdom of God a king, we have in the kingdom of God subjects, that us, followers of Christ, we have the kingdom of God, the war of God, and we have the, in the kingdom of God the territory, the world. Jesus says you are the soul of the earth, the soul of the air. Now, try to spread doubt, soul into the ground. Go home today and spread soul into the ground this afternoon and see what happened after a few hours. And let me know if you can find the soul visible again in a few hours later. The heat of the sun will melt the soul in the ground as soon as possible. And you won't find the soul as you see it when you spread it out. The same way, when we as soul of the air, we are spreading out around the world, we are invisible. We are invisible. So your leadership, your influence will be invisible. Even though you don't see yourself as a leader, I was teaching this to kids a few weeks ago, you are a leader in an invisible way because you have influence in this world without showing up who you are, without showing up, showing up your leadership. It's like this. When someone enters into a meeting, school, companies, neighborhood, coffee shop, whatever, and you know the people who know you, they see you coming in, they change the conversation. They change their, their attitude. Not against you, because they are your friends, because they are relating with you. But they change their attitude, they change their behavior, because they know that in front of you, they cannot speak bad words. In front of you, they cannot act freely like they act with no believers. Because they know that in front of you, you will be scandalized for this sinful act. So people know that your life is a life that pursues purity. And when they see you coming in for the respect that they have for you, they will stop to say things that you hear, your ears cannot hear. And they will stop to add in front of you with behaviors that they see that it will offend you. Did it happen to you? That's what I say. We are not here to antagonize the war in a, in a way that we are fighting against them in the flesh. We are fighting against them in, in, in our ideologies because we want them to follow us no matter what. And we, because we know that we, we are true and we, we, we know the truth and we, and we are right in everything that we do and, and, and say. And, and we criticize them because they are not doing what we are doing. We are, we are not in that position. That's not our job as Christians. We are, that's not our job as the soul of the air. The soul of the air is once again to preserve the putrefaction of the sinfulness of this world and to give a life test. You will go, you can go to the, to the cancer center here in Yusan and you can ask the people if they are deserving a second chance. You can, you can ask to these people and say, do you want to do the sins right again? And they will say, if I have a second chance, I will do the sins right again. Why? Because they know that whatever they tasted in this world didn't give them happiness. But we as Christians, when we taste what is the life of the kingdom of heaven, we know that yes, we have a different meaning of life. We have a, a new style of living that is worthy of sacrifice, worthy of, of giving away everything that we have in this world for this precious life. We are the soul of the air. We are the light of this world. God, as our king, he's looking for servants. He's looking for subjects that can bring the kingdom of this world back to him. God can do all along this, but he's given us the privilege to be used by him. Now what we have to do is to go with our influence and take back what we have lost in the Garden of Eden, the world, this earth, and take back arts, media, education, religion, government, family, business. That's our job. That's our role in this world. You have to understand, you are a person of influence. You are a person of leadership. 
You are not here just to, to live like animals live. Eat, sleep, work, die. That's not the plans that God has for you. God has wonderful plans for your life. And he wants you to enjoy the gospel, enjoy Christianity, and, and, and be as happy to testify the word. To see the heavens open for you. And you can see that God, every minion, is given an opportunity to share the virtues of the kingdom of heaven, the characters of, of Christianity into the world. And as invisible as the soul, you can let the culture of Christianity go beyond your territories. You just need to pray. You just need to ask God for favor. You just need to put your hands, your talent, your life in God's hand to be used. Whatever you have a hand, whatever you have in your, in your life, God can use your talent, your experience, your shape. God wants all of us to be part of his kingdom. Be part of this wonderful plan to extend the kingdom of heaven in this world. You just need to pray, God, increase my influence. If I didn't wake up my influence, wake me up, Lord. Get, wake me up today, Lord, that I can influence more people than I have influenced so far. If I never influence my children, let me influence my children today. If I never influence my parents, let me influence my parents today. If I never influence my friends, let me influence my friends today. Let's increase our influence from today. But they need a commitment from you. They need a decision from you. They need a prayer from you, for, from you to make this first step. God is ready to give you the power to be his witness to the end of the world. But it's your prayer that will make the difference. It's your prayer that will change your life from the moment that you're going to step out, out of this worship time and place to the world. When Jabez was born in the Old Testament story, it said that his name was Jabez. That means that his name was negative. He was just a person who was not deserved, even from his mother wounds. When he was born, he was called Jabez. But in his time, that people were just bullying him, probably rejecting him from their homes even, he just came back to God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and said, God, if you stand my territory, if you listen to my prayer, then I will serve you. Then I will give my life to you. And God granted him his prayer request. And we know this famous Chavez prayer. God is ready to listen to your prayer today. You just need to ask God, increase my influence. Increase my territory of lordship for you. I want to serve you. I want to give my life to you. Use me as the soul of the air. Even invisible, but I want to be there. Even invisible that nobody noticed, but they, when I come to every meeting, you will be with me and people will notice. If you need to be persecuted with that, yeah, so be it. Not because of your lack of popularity, but because of your righteousness. Stand fear in righteousness. Show the, the characters of the beauty of Christ. And let the virtues of the kingdom of heaven lead your life. As the soul of the air, I promise you that you will be very blessed and you will feel the more happy person in this world just by being used by God. In Jesus' name, let's pray.